It is my pleasure to welcome uh, at Astronomy Seminar, Tartu Observatory. Uh, Aitachi Skandarova from Shamahi Observatory. She is visiting us uh, in the framework of POEMS project, Physics of Extreme uh, Massive Stars. And uh, she is a PhD student and uh, she will uh, talk about her research uh, on wolf type star. wolf type stars are uh, very massive stars in the late stages of the evolution with very massive uh, winds and envelopes. And uh, this research historically has been done also in our observatory, uh, but now this uh, massive star community has shrinked quite uh, essentially, but I still think that we can continue uh, with uh, the st studies of massive stars. And uh, that's why I'm particularly happy to welcome today Aitachi Skandarova. Thank you. Hi everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the photometric variability of wolf type uh, HD 1975 star. Uh, note that this is the serial number of this star in the Henry Dnieper catalog of star. In the 70 catalog of the wolf type stars, this uh, star is called the very uh, 134. Our main goal is to study the photometric variability of this star, both short-term photometric variability and also long-term photometric variability. To study the photometric variability of this star, we use the image of this star, which uh, uh, obtained it using the CCD photometer of 60 centimeter telescope of our Shamaha Astrophysical Observatory under the guidance of my supervisor, Jamlana Rustamur. General level of red type stars are most interesting uh, object of the modern astrophysics. This is real uh, due to the fact that uh, at the end of the day evolution, they change to uh, black hole or uh, neutron star, depending on the initial masses of this star. And they are, we can say that they are progenitors of the uh, neutron stars and also black holes. From the other point of view, uh, this uh, star, uh, uh, wolf right type star, uh, found in both single star and also binary star system. Uh, among the binary star system, close binary star system is most interesting. They are uh, star systems uh, in the certain stage of the evolution, there is intensive matter flow between the component of this system. Other research uh, star is also close binary star system. That is why to learn this star is also relevant from the point of uh, view, understanding the uh, physics of close binary star system and in short we can conclude that this star uh, is very actual from the point uh, to do it to two main factors first it is closed binary star system and the other reason is that at the end of the evolution it will turn to either neutron star or black hole uh, as i said before our main purpose is to study the photometric properties of this star. To achieve this goal, we have implemented some steps. Firstly, we obtained the CCD image of this star using our 60 centimeter telescope. And then we have proceeded to obtain a CCD image. And then we investigated uh, the photometric variability of this star. And then we have uh, published the, the main result about this star. This is about publication of our work. We have published two uh, main work about uh, this stars. First one uh, published by me, this is thesis material. It is about anomalous photometry variability of these stars. And in front work of Republican Conference of Master two years ago, uh, another work is our main articles about the short-term photometric variability of this star. It is our collective work, uh, me, my supervisor, and also another young, researcher uh, is published in the International Science Conference of Young Researchers, the last year. 
And the result obtained from the uh, processing and analyzing of the CCD image of this uh, uh, star can be used when uh, building a physical model of this star. And also the method which we use in the uh, researching of this star can be applied in the similar studies. And also, uh, which we uh, obtain result from this working. Uh, it is uh, relevant from the point of view of understanding the essence of physical processes take place in the closed binary st uh, star system, uh, also in Bovra type star, and as well as uh, to give the right direction for the theoretical uh, research of these stars. And since uh, this our research object is Wolfram type stars, I will not give uh, a brief information about the history of this star and in uh, information more deeply about the uh, characteristic of Wolfram type stars. Uh, Wolfram type stars first discovered in 1867 years by the French astronomer Charles Wolf and George Wright in the Cygnus constellations, and uh, when they uh, discovered this star, there are not only three known uh, of right type star, and uh, why they called this star to uh, classify it in another uh, class, it is mainly due to the, the main characteristic which uh, differs them from the uh, an ordinary normal star. Um, and the main observation materials, the main fact, uh, the main characteristic of the uh, wolf right type star, which obtained until now from the photometric, spectral, uh, polarimetric, and other type of the observation until now, is that first of all, in the spectrum of these stars, the uh, intensity and the intense and width uh, radiation lines corresponding to the different ionization stage of the um, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and also helium are observed. This is main uh, uh, special characteristic of both right type stars. Also, even the first time uh, they classified as both right type stars, the main result uh, uh, is that the intense and bore helium-2 uh, radiation line is observed in the both right type uh, stars spectrum. And another main characteristic of this start is that uh, the width of the radiation line in the spectrum of an ordinary normal star is only a few angstrom, but in the wolf right type star, it changed about uh, 50 and 100 angstroms. And uh, this, uh, according to the modern ideas, wolf right type stars consist of hot core and any envelope uh, surrounding this core. And this uh, expect at the speed of the 1,000 and 3,000 kilometer divided second. And uh, these stars uh, divided into three subsequences, nitrogen type, uh, oxygen type, and also carbon type of right type stars. And in all type of the, these uh, sequences, uh, the radiation life of the hydrogen and also um, helium are observed, but the intensity and width of the hydrogen line is very big. For example, for comparison, we can say that in the sun, the amount of the uh, hydrogen is approximately 10 times greater than the amount of the helium. But in the right type star, the amount of uh, hydrogen is very low because due to the multiple they lost the uh, hydrogen rich outer layers. And uh, according to the modern research, half of the star, um, uh, both right type stars found in the closed binary star system. And this allows us to find the uh, masses of this star and also another parameters. And uh, according to new measurement, the masses change between the 10 and 83 solar masses. And in the HR uh, the diagram of the stars, these stars are located between the main sequence stars and helium stars. Uh, it, it means that they uh, have passed the uh, main sequence stage and are at the final stage of their evolution. This is all about the main characteristic of the both right type stars. And it is about the evolution of both right type stars. Um, the evolution process of the 
Closed binary star system are totally different from the evolution process of the single stars. Uh, we know that the rate and nature of the evolution process uh, depends on strongly depends on the mass of the stars. The stars with large masses evolve faster and uh, approach the it is final stage of evolution during the million of years. But stars with the low masses. Uh, continues it is uh, evolution process during the billion of years and uh, in closed binary star system the first uh, component the more massive component evolves faster and um, it, it feels it is a roche block a roche block is in a equipotential uh, surface which surrounds the uh, star itself and from this point of uh, from this moment, there is an intense multiple between the component. As you can see in the here, it is the schematic representation of the closed binary star system consists of two O-type stars. Uh, this one is massive, uh, uh, another one is a secondary component. Uh, after this one, uh, field, it is Roche law. From the inner Lagrangian pole, there is intensive multiple to the secondary uh, stars. And also in this, uh, there is a different possible uh, way of evolution of massive closed binary system. Uh, but uh, the one of the main uh, possible case of evolution of this massive system is like this, uh, which uh, other object also evolved in this way. In the beginning of system, we have two O type star, O1 and O2. The more massive component is the um, more massive component is the main component of the system. Uh, let's assume that in our system, the O2 is more massive component. After uh, a certain period of time, it will feel it is Roche lab and will uh, there will be the intense multiple to the secondary stop due to the uh, Losing of it is hydrogen rich outer layer, it will turn to Wolfright type star. And as we know, at the end of the evolution, Wolfright type stars expand as a compact component. Here we indicate compact component we see. It means it may be a black hole or neutron uh, st uh, star. We don't know exactly. And as a, then also the first star is our secondary star. Will also. Um, uh, evolve in the same way for the transform to Wolfram type star, and at the end of the evolution in the system, we can see two compact component uh, object. Maybe they are neutron star or black holes. And uh, due to the uh, this uh, evolution process, the more massive component in the beginning, uh, certain period of time turns to the less massive component of the system. This uh, case firstly uh, observed in the Algol type star, I mean beta per se star, and that's why in the uh, scientific literature this phenomenon is called as Algol uh, paradox. In other, other words, we can say that it's also called as the theory of change of roles. And this is a uh, key properties of our star. Uh, as we say uh, before, uh, the right type star divided uh, into three sequences, nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen. And uh, this star is nitrogen type of right type stars in the spectral atlas of galaxies. These uh, stars are divided into two class, V and S and V and W. Yeah, S is, uh, stands for strong and V stands for weak. Um, our star is then a type star, it means that the radiation line of the nitro nitrogen is very strong in this star. And this star is uh, uh, located in the Cygnus constellation, and there is a 190 nebula, ring nebula around this star, and it is located uh, far from the galactic plane. And also, the then 7.44 day period variability of this star uh, discovered. Uh, the Cherapushev explains this by the fact that it is a, a compact binary system, uh, a binary system with a compact component. This is basic physics parameter of other star mass, temperature, radius, 
and also absolute star magnitude. All of these information are taken from the Simbad astronomical database. And this is about photometric and spectral properties of this star. Until now, in different countries, the photometric and spectral um, observation of this star was carried out. And the main result of a uh, photometric um, observation is that uh, when uh, it observed in 1987, uh, it is revealed that the shape and um, amplitude of luminous surface curve of this star change fluctuates. And also in due to the result of our uh, obtained from our atometer telescope in our observatory, one of the spectral results of this for this star is that it was determined uh, that the shape and parameter of its spectral lines in its spectrum uh, change uh, uh, seriously change and. Uh, when we say parameter, I mean uh, equivalent with and any other parameters like this. And this is that, uh, of course, uh, they carried out many uh, observation for this star, but they need also new uh, observation, a new uh, technology which equipped with new modern uh, light receiver. And that's why we think that we also uh, have to uh, take uh, carried out the new observation for these stars. Here you see the of uh, Shamaha Astrophysical Observatory, the general view. Uh, Shamaha Astrophysical Observatory, named after Nasrat Tusi, was established in 1959 years. The, it is located at the altitude of uh, 1,500 um, meters above the sea level. Uh, generally, we have six telescopes at the observatory, four is stellar telescope, two one is solar telescope. Uh, the 60 centimeter telescope is one of the main telescopes of our observatory, and uh, it is using for photometric observation. This telescope produced by the Germany and uh, Carl Zeiss company and installed in Azerbaijan 1978. And this is the about the and uh, the optical system of this telescope is classic Cassegrain system. You see the main parameter of this uh, telescope. And this is also the view of the our telescope and CCD uh, photometer, which turn to this telescope. This uh, we installed this CCD photometer in our observatory during the uh, twenty eight and twenty ten, and this uh, this is made by America. And we use uh, we put a uh, successful law uh, put operation, but now we uh, try to change our uh, CCD. This is the main technical parameters of our CCD, and it is about the observation of this star. Uh, we carried out observation of this star in our sixty centimeter telescope during the July November in twenty ten and also during the July uh, September in twenty twenty one two years ago. And here you see the CCD image of the this star. We also obtained the axillary image. I mean uh, dark image, flat image, and also. Um, by its image, because besides this image, it is not possible to process the uh, obtained material of uh, star itself. For the calibration of the materials, we use the maximum GL program package. And here you see the main working windows of this uh, program. Firstly, we open all image of these stars and then we open also the dark bias and flat uh, image and we obtain the uh, super bias, super dark and super flat file to uh, to calibrate the main, uh, main image of our object. And then after the calibration, we can start to uh, have a photometry measurement. For this, we firstly must have to choose the aperture. Aperture consists of two parts, uh, three parts. First is an inner circle, uh, then another one is outer circle, a part between these circles. And here it is uh, chosen of the object. 
uh, this one is our main object, this one our reference, and this the nearest star can be uh, used as a um, control star. Control star may be uh, more than one, it depends on our choosing. And here you see the measurement, uh, the results of main measurement. In the first row, you see the Julian date, which we uh, obtain the image when we obtain this image, the uh, number of image for one uh, night, the exposition time, the apparent magnitude of cell, and measurement error. And all we uh, have carried out the observation of this star in the V filter of the uh, international OBV photometric system. And here you see two different graphics. The first one is the uh, dependence of the measurement uh, apparent magnitude of uh, this star from the Julian date. As you can see from the uh, picture, it changed it is uh, stellar magnitude between the 7.91 and 8.5. Uh, and but here you see that. Uh, it is the dependence of stellar magnet of the uh, from the Julian date for the control star. Uh, during the within any measurement error, there is no any variation in this star. But here we can see a, a variation during the measurement error. That is why we can say that the photometric vari variability of this star is real. And I also have to note that uh, this uh, control star is very close to near to the other object. And now we uh, already we find uh, uh, there is some photometric variability in the specter of our object. Uh, now we are looking for is this uh, variability periodic or quasi periodic or not. For uh, this, we use uh, firstly uh, looking for after correlation because uh, the simplest way to find any periodicity in any error is to, to construct the after correlation curve. We uh, construct after correlation curve based on the CCD image using the Scarcle method and. Here you see, uh, firstly, we give the uh, until 18 uh, values to lag. Lag here means shifts. And uh, in the ordinates, uh, axis oaks, uh, it uh, shows lag. In the ordinate oaks, it shows correl after correlation. Firstly, we give, uh, you see, that means the uh, lag is equal to the zero. Uh, I mean, there's no any shifting. And then, uh, after correlation, correlation is equal to one. But then we change the values and we, we uh, denote with a rot dot the after correlation which corresponding to the different rows. If uh, we have obtained here any sensorial form, sensorial chain, then we can say that uh, this uh, it is advisable, reasonable to uh, look for uh, periodic photometry variability. And you see it look like this in the form. And then here you see the power spectrum. It is dependence of spectral power from the frequency. And uh, we also construct this using the Scarcler method. And uh, we know that in every power spectrum, there is some peaks, which is uh, which called as uh, false peaks. They are not true uh, peaks. To remove this peak, we use the clean algorithm. We apply the clean algorithm of a specter. You see in the first one, it is dirty, dirty specter, but the other one is clean specter. And we see that in the clean specter, uh, the maximum peaks is take place in the uh, 0 0.5 value of the frequency. And when we use a uh, frequency and period uh, relation, we can change it to period and we find for period uh, the value of 1.818. I will show it in the results. Uh, one of the main curve for the uh, any star which show periodic variability is a luminosity curve. It is the dependence of uh, stellar magnitude from the phase of period. After find the period, we can uh, also calculate the phase of this period. For this, we use this equation 
P is fifth, P is period. Uh, ED uh, stands for Julian date, which we obtain the image of this start. And ED0 is the uh, starting uh, Julian date, beginning Julian date. And using this uh, equation, we find this, and then we can construct the uh, luminosity curve for this star. And we also have carried out the uh, investigate the short periodic variability of this star. This is our another work. Um, we, for this, we use the material which we get two years ago. Uh, here you see the one day's material uh, in June one and two nights. And as you can see from this graphic, it uh, change. It is. Uh, apparent magnitudes between the time from 20.3 until 21.1 from 8.3 and 8.7. And this take, uh, for this, we used the approximately uh, 150 photo for one night. Uh, this also done in the V filters. And as a conclusion, we can say that the short-term periodic variability of this star was detected and uh, using the after, uh, after correlation curve was constructed for the array of the uh, apparent magnet of this star. And it is found that uh, the search of periodic, uh, periodic variation in the array is reasonable. And using the Scarclam method and also uh, clean algorithm, we find 1.889 the periodic photometry variability for this star. And also uh, we explained is by the factors this star is close binary star system. And also we found the, uh, that for this star, the short-term periodic variability occurs at the 0 0.5 phase of the, um, this period. And that's all about our work. So questions, comments? I, I have a question about the sky. Uh... Uh, point at the, at the observatory. How good is the C PSF in your images, for example? Mm -hmm. uh, approximately during the one year or about 200 year, uh, days is very cl uh, clean. We can carry out observation in that days. Point spread function, or how good is the seeing? Uh, Oxy oh, seconds. No, yeah. Um, I can show here because. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't you don't have this information here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The telescope looks very, very familiar. Yeah. Is it exactly the, the, exactly the same telescope? The same telescope. <laughs> the same. So, what questions? Um, people online can just speak or, or write their questions to, to the chat. I would still ask about the uh, average seeing uh, at Shamahi. Maybe not particularly this star, but generally, what is uh, what is considered good seeing or bad seeing in Shamahi? Seeing is like how, how broad will the stellar image become because of the sky fluctuations? The one, one arc second or two or three arc seconds. Sorry, can't I answer this question? Ah. Uh, in our Shamaha observatory, one second image is good image. One second image we could observe. And more than one second, already bad image. 
Okay. Sounds very good. Mm -hmm. Much better than we usually have <laughs> in Tiravara, I mean. For photometry, it is not so important. Yeah. Oh, um, looking today at uh, a, a little bit of the literature on periods that the star has been extensively studied, uh, and I think the first for uh, uh, for photometric variability was found um, maybe in the nineteen fifties or nineteen sixties, certainly before nineteen seventy, and also photo and also spectroscopic variability was detected very early. Well, uh, looking at the literature, I find there are values of period which are kind of all over the place. Um, there's a study, of, a, a very early study uh, from, I think, possibly even Azerbaijan um, or Caucasus region. Um, 1984 gave 7.483 days. Um, then there was also a study by uh, Aikasa Rostumov, uh, 2012, 1.887 days, which matches yours. Um, then there is additionally a photometric study by Morel um, and others, 1989, 2.3 days, with the qualification that the, the spectroscopic variability um, could be only marginally matched by observations in photometry. They picked up the variability very vividly in, in, in spectroscopy, apparently, but in photometry, it was hard to see. Uh, and finally, there's the clearinghouse, which is supposed to be kind of authoritative, the clearinghouse in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, uh, AAVSO. Uh, they have the SX database, and that is supposed to gather together stuff from everywhere, including it's supposed to be now, I guess, more authoritative than the people in Moscow, Polopov and and who. Um, and uh, VSX, the VSX database in Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, gives 3.774 days, but with a colon marker, meaning they're really not sure there's some problem there. Uh, so now just to recapitulate, we have 2.3 days, 7.483 days, your value of 1.887 days, uh, already in the Rasumov 2012 paper, and then 3.774 days with an uncertainty warning at the authoritative clearinghouse. Uh, can you maybe comment a bit? What, what is happening here? Three days is probably average of all. It's the variability of variability. <laughs> Quite common, actually. Yes, uh, when uh, the Wolf and Riot discovered this uh, Wolf Riot type star, uh, one of the they firstly discovered three stars. One of these stars is our uh, right, research so of the original three. Yeah. Uh, until now, many uh, observ photometric observation and also spectral observation was carried out for these stars, and for uh, mainly in the work of the Cherapashov, you we find uh, some information about the periodicity of these stars. Uh, for, uh, also in 1999, Marat also find the, um, the periodicity of uh, this star, which also it is exactly corresponding to our results. And But uh, there, there is this, I think, some problems that uh, there are many uh, observation materials, but uh, it is uh, not uh, the exact model of this uh, Stars. It is not possible until now to construct the fiscal model of these stars, and we think that they uh, need uh, more uh, observation facts. And also, there is also some problem. Uh, they, some scientists in the in some articles write that this is a uh, right type star with compact component or with neutron star or uh, black hole. But in the work of Cheraposhok, he writes that it is not exactly a uh, compact component, it is in a KM type stars. Yes, well, indeed, that's a, that's a, that is a, itself a very interesting problem in the nature of a component because if it's compact, then there should be strong X ray emission. But the X ray emission is weak. We should have, I mean, if it's a yeah. neutron star or black hole, there should be a, a very hot accretion disk, and therefore it should be X ray bright. But this thing is really not very X ray bright. Um, and if, if, on the other hand, it's not a compact object, but an, uh, I guess an M or a K, that's been suggested, a yeah. sort of rather cool late type star. Mm -hmm. uh, if that is the companion, then I think, I think the literature is saying that there's some different problem. It's the, the whole thing is very awkward. Uh, this is hard uh, 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 because it's then, I guess, in some sense, which I don't really understand, it's supposed to be uh, orbiting 
given the presumed period, which is itself very uncertain, but given the uh, but given the uh, given the possibilities for the period and given reasonable assumptions for the masses, you know, really is indeed uh, uh, an M or a K star. Uh, and we know that we can estimate the mass of the whole Fourier itself. The primary we can estimate that mass. So then we get an orbital radius, which puts it in some sense, which I don't quite understand, into a rather awkward place. Uh, uh, it's um, it's some, somehow as though there's maybe uh, an H1 region or a cavity or something. I'm hopelessly vague on this, but there's, there's, there is at any rate also a problem. Um, so I guess uh, this is a further interesting problem. What is is the companion? Is, is the binary companion a compact object or uh, or just um, uh, an M or K star? Uh, but this is separate from the problem with, which I wanted to bring up, which is just the period. Uh, it, the period is not a matter of physical modeling. It's just a matter of observation. And yet the observations are all over the place. Mm -hmm. oh, I noticed that this 3.7 something and 7.4 days they are just multiples of this so one alias in I suppose or something like that. yes but you don't know now why the theory comes ESX uh, gives uh, 3.774 and puts in a warning signal the colon mm, is related okay, to uh, yeah okay yeah can't, can't, can't comment at the moment does this uh, catalog site where it does where it fit? Oh, it kind of does, but it's not terribly clear. Um, there are three references at the SX, at least when I checked this morning, there were, I guess, three references. And um, they, I couldn't really quite see on a quick inspection what was going on. They do, they do give you a bit of graphic references, but it's not, it's not extensive like Sinbad. You get you know, just, a, just a handful typically at VSX. Well, I would suggest in any case to have more uh, observational data, and I would suggest to use test data, which are very uh, High frequency observations, so mm -hmm. or high, high duty uh, cycle. <clears throat> so uh, perhaps then uh, the researcher can uh, check perhaps the uh, cycles or or periodicities or periods are really changing in the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, is it just uh, 1.8 days? Is it the uh, actual main period? And other estimates, uh, previous estimates, are just uh, uh, aliases, or, or how to say, or uh, multiple multiple periods of this main period or or not and mm -hmm. especially this uh, 7.4 days uh, period which was uh, discovered in, in, yes, in the uh, yes. so you you didn't find this 7.4 no no I would ask I would ask about this short time periodicity uh, you showed the graph with the changes of brightness and uh, uh, what is your estimation of an uh, error for this uh, uh, short time zero, zero, four. Uh, excuse me once more uh, 0 0.004, uh, then it is measurement errors. When we compare it our result with uh, this uh, errors, mean square errors, and we see that it is greater than the three mean square error. Okay, so it is uh, clearly the right uh, periodicity. The error is much smaller than changes in magnitude, right? 
we compare with mean square error and get this result. Okay, so it depends. Okay. <laughs> when you clean the data, how uh, did you use the clean algorithm? What, what did you do to get the respect of the same spectrum? Did you just move this? No, we firstly get here the power spectrum for the start. There is uh, there are uh, there were some uh, on false pe uh, false peak and peaks for this spectrum, and we try to uh, remove this uh, false peaks. And for this, we use the clean algorithm. Uh, in the first one, you see the dirty spectrum, but uh, when after we uh, implementation of the clean algorithm, we get the second uh, image, the clean spectrum, and here we see that the main peak is take place at the top of the spectrum. Yeah, so the, do you know what the clean algorithm does? Or the, the idea? No, I don't know exactly. But that uh, applies to the power spectrum. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but the light curve. First, we use Sparkle uh, method, and then we use the clean alg algorithm. This is just an algorithm to uh, remove the bad peaks, uh, false peaks from the your spectrum. Can you know that you use clean algorithm? Is there any specific? Yes. 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 Have you tried to uh, see? Uh, how test data look like? The, this data about measurement or? The test, I mean test satellite data. Have you tried to compare the variability seen in test photometry with the variability which you see? No. I have not uh, uh, any idea about this. Because this is also our um, collective work uh, when we doing this work. I was a master student. We, uh, uh, some of this work uh, was uh, carried out my supervisor and also by the another research. Maybe due to this, I can answer some questions. Okay. Uh, I would just like to comment that this car has been extensively, extensively studied here at our observatory too, by colleagues, Kali Vanuk and Dick Nogis, but uh, mostly spectroscopically, and, and uh, I personally have taken a lot of spectra of this car with our 1.5 inch telescope. But I am not personally used the, the data, so at the moment I cannot tell about the possible spectroscopic periods uh, which they have found. But you will still have some time here, you may talk this by one. If I remember correctly, there aren't three. <laughs> uh, not, uh, not, not any exact periods. Possibly, yeah. yeah. In spectroscopy. Yes. <clears throat> well, Spill was um, in Borel just now, about 2.3 days. They claimed a period, uh, the paper, uh, paper from 1989. Spectroscopy paper. Uh, who, by who? Uh, Morel. I remember on the first author, Morel, M O R E L. This is the period they said they detected uh, with confidence in the spectroscopy that it was only barely evident in photometry. That was the frequency you could take spectra of this star here. Uh, well, usually a few. In, in modern time, in summertime, modern time, a few days or, or even every night, sometimes it happens. <laughs> yeah. three, three, four consecutive nights, for example. Uh, but, uh, but often uh, much less frequently, once or two per month, perhaps. Mm -hmm. 
And I think I'd also try to find some rapids that are proper for your degree to go in one yeah. point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There have been spectroscopic time series in many spectra for one night. Yeah. You visited us in Ontario at the David Dunham Observatory, and, and he was then working on Gold Friday. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah, did, yeah, we had yeah. one glorious night when we actually worked in Estonia. I was also by his assistant, so that was extremely good. Um, but I do not remember what star he was observing. I don't even remember whether it was a program of multiple stars or whether it was just a ruthless time series on one single star. Yeah. He, he would no doubt remember, you know, as the data, yeah, yeah. but he's not here today. He was also the statement in one of the slides that the continuum estimates a lower temperature and the spectral lines go with the dimension levels. So, how do you look at different features from the problem of change perspective? Just uh, when you do the program of the newsletter on the uh, page of this from the question. Of course, I guess that was a bit of the the case of the star, then there is even difficult to find continuum. The emission lines are very, very broad. And I think in every normal photometric filter, there are a lot of emission lines actually. Yes. And this was UBB, which is very, very, very yes. And we especially use the V filter because in the V filter, the change of radiation loss is very low, about seven seven um, percent. That's why this is uh, the changes when take with this spectrum. It is mainly uh, related with the change of uh, continuum spectrum. That's why we use the V filter. Yeah. 